Hey, Drackers. Here's something pretty exciting. Um, this is the Scatawa Mountain Lion. And I found it on the side of a trail here. I was uh, stopping to look at something on the other side of the trail where some turkeys had done a dust bath. And I happened to look across the trail and see this, and uh, wow, pretty impressive. Um, so, why is this not a bear scat? So, black bears, this time of year, are eating a lot of acorns. There's also still some um, manzanita berries available that they can eat, and very few blackberries. So their diet this time of year is primarily those items um, and anything else they can get. In this case, this is a predator scat. It's full of fur. Um, get the camera to focus there. One thing you can see about this scat is it's really twisted, but mostly on the inside. It's also really hard. This is not squishy. I can't squash that scat. Um, and the twisting is inside. It's just, it's not like your coyote scats that look like just twist, twisty ropes. This stuff is really compacted. Um, and it's wide. This is over, over an inch and a quarter at the widest point probably there. Um, that one's an inch and a little over an inch and a quarter. Anyway, um, so you also notice that this is probably the best example of it. The outside is smooth. So when it comes out of the animal, there's a, a mucus coating on it. And that mucus coating possibly helps protect them or possibly helps, you know, move it out of the intestines easier and stuff. Um, and also the fur is really wrapped around stuff here. So if there's any bones in here, they're going to be inside this. Um, and so it doesn't scratch the intestines as it comes out. The fur gets wrapped around whatever material. And so you notice the outer part has that smooth coating to it. Um, since it has been deposited, obviously the mucus part is dried. And the, the white stuff is, you know, when they're eating meat, blood meal, things like that, it'll turn white relatively quickly. Um, but you can still see hair in here from the deer that it looks like it ate. There's all kinds of fur in here, and this pointy part right here, this one was the last one to exit because it has this, this pointy thing. Um, and if you look closely, you can see a lot of hair in there. So this animal ate a deer. Um, now, a couple weeks ago, I was actually following the trail of a mountain lion that had killed a deer out here, and I couldn't find the carcass because it went across a very... Um, sign contaminated area so I couldn't follow it beyond that but this possibly is the scat from that mountain lion and it may have been here for a couple weeks there's no way really to age this for sure we've had some rain since then not very much not even an inch um, tenth of an inch maybe um, so we've had a little bit of rain we've had some heat we've had a couple of days where it was in the 90 degrees um, so this stuff has dried out it's aged quite a bit um, this is definitely not its fresh appearance but you can tell by the size, the compactness of it, the fact that it's a predator scat. This is all made out of um, fur from its prey. And the fact that it's twisted inside and really hard and, and uh, firm. Um, and that the outside is smooth. That this is a cat scat. And then the size of it and quantity, this is just way too much for a bobcat. So our bobcats out here are not huge. They, they run about 25 pounds maybe. They don't get really big. Um, but this large a quantity is way too much for one of our local bobcats to produce. It is a feline scat, definitely. Um, you can look at your domestic cat, um, and their scats will be similar in appearance. They have the segmented appearance to them, and they'll be compact, and they'll have blunt ends like these do. Kind of like, you know, like little marshmallows. And they break apart on those segments often. Right here is a flat area where... A segment broke off so this has fallen apart there's the flat end of one of the segments so segmented firm smooth on the outside made out of the remains of prey and this one was deposited right on the side of a trail um, and we're under some big trees right here um, these are Douglas fir trees 
and just over the edge right there there's a cliff that drops off and that cliff drops down to the river here's the trail across the way is the the wild turkey dust bass that originally made me stop here and then uh, there's this there's also what appears to be somewhat of a scrape right here where the the ground has been it looks like scraped see how the the duff has been disturbed here and here I can't say for sure because this is really old at this point it's definitely not a fresh scat but this has been disturbed and that possibly is a scrape cougars will sometimes prepare a scrape and then put a scat in it not always um, but it's possible and the width is right um, 8 to 12 inches I believe is the size or width of the scrapes that you find from cougars so this is a really cool find and it's not your everyday thing this is this is pretty rare to find cougar scat um, they are very elusive you hardly ever see them I've only seen maybe four or five in the 20 years that I've lived in this location so they're very hard to see you don't uh, find their scats very often I find their tracks far more often than I find their scats but this is a beautiful example of a mountain lion scat and it was a real treat to find this so I'm glad that I was able to show you guys this um, this is just a fantastic find so I hope you've enjoyed this and that this helps you identify mountain lion scats and scats of felines in general should you find them in the future on your own um, tracking adventures thanks for watching